हेलो फ्रेंड्स आई एम प्रोफेसर तुषार गुजराती फ्रॉम एस एन डी कॉलेज ऑफ इंजीनियरिंग एंड रिसर्च सेंटर येवला टुडे वील डिस्कस द टॉपिक पोल्स एंड जीरोज ऑफ द सिस्टीम फ्रॉम द सब्जेक्ट मैकेट्रॉनिक्स सो लेट्स स्टार्ट विथ दिस टॉपिक सो वट इज पोल्स एंड जीरोज ओके सो द पोल्स एंड जीरोज आर प्रॉपर्टीज ऑफ ट्रांसफर फंक्शन विच कैरेक्टराइज द डिफरेंशियल इक्वेशन एंड प्रोवाइड अ कम्प्लीट डिस्क्रिप्शन ऑफ द बिहेवियर ऑफ द सिस्टीम ओके सो वी वॉन्ट टू फाइंड आउट बिहेवियर ऑफ द सिस्टीम वेदर सिस्टीम इज स्टेबल और अनस्टेबल सो सच अ बिहेवियर इफ वी वॉन्ट टू फाइंड आउट सो वी गो फॉर पोल्स एंड जीरोज ओके सो वट इज पोल्स सो द पोल्स ऑफ अ ट्रांसफर फंक्शन आर द रूट्स ऑफ द कैरेक्टरिस्टिक इक्वेशन इन द डिनामिनेटर ऑफ द ट्रांसफर फंक्शन ओके सो वी वी फाइंड एक्चुअली ट्रांसफर फंक्शन द ट्रांसफर फंक्शन एज न्यूमरेटर एंड डिनामिनेटर बोथ पार्ट्स सो इफ वी टेक रूट्स ऑफ द डिनामिनेटर पार्ट सो दैट गिव्स अस द पोल्स ऑफ द ट्रांसफर फंक्शन एंड वट इज जीरोज द जीरोज ऑफ अ ट्रांसफर फंक्शन आर द रूट्स ऑफ द कैरेक्टरिस्टिक्स इक्वेशन इन द न्यूमरेटर ऑफ द ट्रांसफर फंक्शन सो ट्रांसफर फंक्शन एज न्यूमरेटर पार्ट ऑल्सो so if we take roots of the numerator equation then we get zeros of the transfer function so these are the two definitions of poles and zeros okay so poles is related to denominator roots okay and zero is related to roots of numerator equation okay this you have to remember now here the relationship is provided between the poles of the system damping coefficient and natural frequency okay so usually the damping coefficient what your damping coefficient is there it is denoted by zeta and natural frequency is denoted by omega n this is natural frequency okay so when we find out roots of the equation okay so roots of the equation has two parts one is real part and one is imaginary part so whatever real part is there it is denoted on x axis so this is real part and whatever imaginary part is there that is shown on y axis like this there are two parts real and imaginary so whatever damping coefficient is there this damping coefficient zeta it is provided on x axis so here you can check here it is minus zeta and here it is plus zeta on x axis and on y axis you will find omega n okay so now this entire plane is called as s plane okay so i have written here this is s plane there are two types of planes are there that is time domain analysis and s domain analysis so when we use transfer function at that time our equation are converted into s domain okay that's why here we have written s plane now uh, we have marked two poles in this graph so this is one pole here and one is pole over here okay so like this two poles are marked over here <clears throat> so you can check here from this zeta is equal to minus 1 if if you go like this what happens zeta is decreasing similarly on this side also zeta is decreasing okay and zeta is zero on this y axis so here it is zeta is zero and here also zeta is zero okay so you understand this on y axis zeta is zero so we can understand that damping is zero on y axis okay and damping is maximum on x axis because there is value is one so damping is varying from x axis to y axis okay so this you understand damping is very important damping is what there is uh system is stable when damping is high okay so damping is useful for making system stable and natural frequency also located here on y axis omega n so you can check here so whatever this pole is there it is located at omega n distance from origin okay also this is located at omega n distance so this is the natural frequency of the system so depending upon location of the pole the system has natural frequency omega n 
so it may be zero or large or minus also so like this there is relationship between damping and natural frequency with respect to poles of the system <coughs> now this is the relationship between pole location and response of the system so when we give some input to the system it provides some response okay so how we can find response of the system with the help of pole location now you check here we have provided some different locations pole locations for different system okay so now consider system number one okay this is blue colored pole is there there is only one pole that is blue colored system one so its response is shown something like this first graph so it had some stable response okay it is providing only one peak and then at that time and then what is happening it is providing stable response <coughs> now there is system number two that is green colored part is there the second graph you can check here so here the graph is providing something uh, inclined line okay so this is nature of the second system second pole now you check third system that is red one and third graph what happens here the system re response is zero initially and it increases after some time okay so this is the response of third system now you check system number four so what happens in system number four some peaks are shown here and then system goes to stable region okay and system number five it has only natural frequency that's why damping is zero that's why it is showing continuous variation graph number five okay so like this there is location of pole and response of the system so what i want to tell you actually here you check graph number one and graph number four graph number one and graph number four so the poles are on left hand side of the graph so let us assume this is the middle line this is right portion and this is left portion okay so for graph number one and graph number four <coughs> the poles are on left side and you can check that the system is more stable in first and fourth number graph so you can check this is stable region this is also stable region so there are peaks are very less one or two and we get straight line so that's why when poles are on left hand side at that time you get system stable and when poles are on right hand side at that time you will get system unstable or marginally stable okay so like this there is relationship between pole location and response of the system so let us take example how we can identify poles so there is one transfer function is shown over here so transfer function is y of s upon u of s is equal to 0.5 s plus 2 divided by s square plus 0.5 s plus 2 so this transfer function has numerator as well as denominator so let us take denominator s square plus 0.5 s plus 2 is equal to 0 and make it equal to 0 this equation is equal to 0 and we can find roots of the equation so you can find roots of the equation by using that formula mathematics formula minus b plus or minus under root of b square minus 4 h divided by twice a you all should aware of this formula and if you solve this and you go on solving you will get poles are located at minus 0 0.25 plus or minus 1.39 i okay so as i told you earlier the poles have two parts real and imaginary so 0 0.25 is real part that is minus 0 0.25 is real part and plus or minus 1.39 i is negative part okay so here pole is negative minus 0 0.25 so it will come in left hand side of the graph if you draw this at the time what will happen the value is minus 20 minus 0 0.25 that's why it will be on left hand side of the graph and that's why system is stable okay now if you want to find out identification of zeros that is zeros at that time what we will do we will take numerator that is 0.5s plus 2 which is equal to 0 
and here we'll get root of the equation that is yes is equal to minus 2 divided by 0 0.5 and 0 is located at minus 4 so here we'll get value of the root as minus 4 okay so like this we can find 0 of the equation now stability analysis is based on location of the pole actually i have already explained to you this in previous slides so we can find stability of the system so for all initial conditions if the response of the system decays to equilibrium the system is presumed to be stable at large okay so if our response decays to equilibrium if response comes to equilibrium what happens system is assumed to be stable at large so what is absolute stability absolute stability is whether system is stable or not and what is relative stability system is stable but under what conditions so this is the difference between absolute and relative stability the real part of the poles of a given system must be on left side of the s plane for the system to be stable at large as i already told you the real part of the poles of the given system must be on left side of the s plane okay it should be on left side of the s plane for the system to be stable at large so this you have to remember so as i told you earlier so here you can check this is system one so left side whatever the poles is there those poles are on left side that's why system is stable for system number one also for system number four the poles are on left hand side that's why system is stable after one or two picks only okay that's why system are stable when poles are on left hand side of the graph or s plane so here you can check what is written in case the poles are complex conjugate pair the real part must be negative for the system to be stable okay so that is suppose this is the graph complex conjugate pair means what poles are on this opposite side okay so these are called as complex conjugate pair so if poles are complex conjugate pair the real part must be negative for the system to be stable so this is the case number one so like this the part must be negative for the system to be stable now case number two if any of the poles have value zero if pole is having value 0 the system is deemed to be marginally stable the system will be marginally stable not completely but marginal means pole should location should be at the center okay so this is case number 2 and if the poles are positive have positive real part the system is to be unstable means what if poles are located in this part that is positive part okay at the time we can say that system is unstable okay and unstable so like this we can do stability analysis based on location of the poles so thank you so much friends for this video watching this video thank you